when I was at the Home Hardware Show, I ran into Luciano at, at his booth uh, while I was doing my full-time thing, and had a quick conversation, asked if he wanted to come out and talk to the club, and he, and he graciously volunteered. And I think it's a great opportunity for us to really get to understand, um, you know, the essence behind what, what it takes to make a good saw blade, what the differences are, what about rudder bits, what are we looking for. So they have a wealth of knowledge that they're bringing to us tonight. Uh, I would encourage everyone to ask a ton of questions. Uh, it's going to be a great, a great learning lesson for all of us. So with that, um, I want to thank the channel and his guests for coming out tonight and talking to us about their products. So thank, thank you. you. Um, my partner here is Marco. He lives in the area, so it's easy for him to get to this place. And I live in the city, so... Um, I'm not here to teach anybody about woodworking. I think you guys have enough experience. I'm here to tell you about the Freud family and where it all started and how we make product and why we make product the way we make product. Um, everybody's got one of these little handouts with my business card on it. Um, instead of popping it up on the screen there and probably something going crazy that nobody could follow along, we made copies for everybody so you can follow along uh, and you can stop me at any time and ask any of the questions you want, okay? So, when we make product, we, we, there's, there's one thing we do. We want to make it as best in the world. We've been making saw blades and router bits and shapers now for better part of 60 years. Um, the company started out, believe it or not, in Italy. It's an Italian-based company. It's in the... A little further, about an hour and a half northeast of Venice. It's in a town called Udine. Um, it was a, a family operation. There were four brothers that uh, owned it. Um, and then through the years, it petered down to two brothers. And one brother had 50% of the Italian operation and 100% of the Spanish operation because I understand a lot of you folks own Freud routers uh, that we manufactured in Spain. All our product that has a Freud name on it or a Diablo name on it is all manufactured in Europe. Nothing's overseas. The other side. The other part. Okay. <laughs> we, um, um, it, it is one of our core, um, our core items that we live by. There's none of this Freud product will never be manufactured in China or Taiwan or India or any places like that. Um, it's all either Italian, uh, Swiss, German, um, in Poland, Spain. Uh, some of the stuff is going to be starting to be manufactured in North America soon, in uh, North Carolina. And we will not um, devalue the Freud or the Diablo name. So Freud, Freud stands on its own. Freud is, is your brand. You guys are the woodworkers. Freud is a woodworking branch of everything else. And everything derives from here. This is a large diameter sawmill uh, blade. Uh, we make them from this big to slightly larger than this. And we sell these locally. Um, small mills out in uh, New Brunswick or in British Columbia. There's stores in, in British Columbia that sell them as a regular item. And they'll start from a 16 inch up to 30 inch. And we manufacture, we don't sell a lot of them. Um, you know, we could custom make them up to a six foot diameter if they really wanted to, okay? Any questions so far? No, not to say the large logging industry, no. Those are all uh, stuff that's even beyond us. We, we supply some of the smaller mills. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, manufacturing, kitchen manufacturers, uh, door manufacturers, um, uh, window manufacturers will buy our product because we have systems that can run and I'll talk about it a little bit later on the shapers that can run for three years maintenance free and without sharpening okay and they're engineered and they're they're built to the specification of the manufacturer who wants them built so back to the Freud portion of it um, so they started making is, is router bits and saw blades. That's all we were known for is router bits and saw blades. Initially they started making shaper knives or cutter knives for uh, dual surface planers and stuff like that and they eventually started going and making router bits and saw blades was a natural thing after that. We manufacture our own carbide. We're the largest uh, carbide producer in the world. Virgin carbide. 
we actually manufacture it ourselves. We blend it and we put it on blades. Okay, everybody else wants to buy it from us. Everybody else is sourcing it from somebody else. The largest carbide sourcer of uh, carbide manufacturer for, um, let's call it, for masonry bits and any, anything else is uh, Sandvik. They do a lot of carbide. Uh, carbide is just a byproduct of steel. So they, all the other solid companies are sourcing carbide. They're not actually uh, structuring it themselves. We buy all the materials, the cobalt materials, the titanium, and everything else, and we blend it. And we have very, very specific uh, grinds that they need to put on it. Like our carbide uh, bit, that's for lack of a better word, our carbide uh, flake is probably half the size of a pinhead on a needle. So uh, we compress a lot of that. We make 37 different blends of carbide, and that goes for router bits and, and saw blades. So if a saw blade is cross-cutting, we'll use one carbide formula. If a saw blade is ripping, we'll use another. If a saw blade is cutting metal, we'll use another. And I'll show you all the different cuts and all the different alterations that are in the blades, okay? The steel that we make our saw blades from, if you flip over the page, sorry, we'll just go back a little bit. Um, at the bottom, you'll see this big U-shaped building. That was built in 2006. It's 600,000 square feet. And it's a U-shape, but it's since I've been there last, it's the center area is filled in. And so is some of the outside areas. We actually run out of space. We're throwing out, we're putting out about 40,000 blades a day. Oh, wow. Uh, and believe it or not, about 85% of the blades come to North America. Now, most of this, this style of blade, and most of this style of blade, they have the, the industrial blades, and there's actually, between this one and this one, there's another one. They're for the commercial blades, the, uh, the ones that, say, the door manufacturer, the kitchen manufacturer will use. Um, they're the ones that are mostly used in Europe. We're using, in North America, we're using, this is more familiar to some of you guys, or the actual Freud blades are more familiar to most of you here. All the other stuff is in Europe, but 85% of the production is coming to North America. 75%, or no, actually even more, about 70, 85 to 90% of the rubber bit production comes to North America because Europe uses this. They don't use a lot of of uh, routering and router bits, so they, they use a lot of shapers, okay? When you say shaper, you mean uh, really large router? Yes, yes, this is for a small, that's for a small shaper. Yeah. They're shaper heads that uh, we can manufacture to the spec of the company. Door, window, door and window company will send us drawings, and it, they started about 24 to 30,000 euros a head. And it will run for approximately 30, well, for about 36 months and maintenance free. No sharpening, no nothing. So they're, like the place that they work in, um, everybody works in a lab coat because it's very, very clean. They can't get the metals, are not allowed to uh, be contaminated by anything. Yes, sir? Is that on any type of material? Most of the material that they're using there, it's not like North America, it's all wood. They use a lot of wood, more so than we do here. Here we have a lot of man-made stuff, synthetics, uh, melamine, uh, MDF. I mean, you know, a three-quarter inch piece of MDF is about that tall when it starts. So once you get all the water and everything out of it and shrink it all down, you get three-quarters, five-eighths piece of MDF. Is that harder on the blade? Yes, it is. MDF consists of uh, anything that you guys decide to throw out today. So it's paper, cardboard, staples, nuts and bolts, nails, whatever, and it's munched. So if you want to shut off all the lights and you get a piece of MDF and you run it through a table saw, it looks like fireflies everywhere. So you'll get all of this effect because it's cutting through. If a blade is not made to cut through metals, then you'll see all these little sparks coming through and stuff like that. MDF is very difficult on blades. Melamine is even worse because it's not so much that there's metals of, or foreign objects in, in the melamine. One, the hard surface on the top, and two is the, bounding, the binding agents inside that really screw up the blades. It's just like cutting uh, pine 24 hours a day for seven days a week and never cleaning that blade. 
And when you take the blade off, it's full of pitch. Mm. It's full of tar, and tar is very acidic -y, so it will really ruin the welds. Okay, and the way we build the blades with the red on them, this red is not paint. Okay, I'll tell you. So the way we build them, we don't allow uh, a lot of stuff to stick to it other than the teeth. We don't want to paint the teeth. The teeth are the most important thing of our blades. We don't want, we don't need to hide it, okay? Any questions? So the 600,000 square foot facility is running around 40,000 blades. They're at capacity and we're still yanking for more. Uh, the saw blade, the uh, router bit facility is slightly over 100,000 square feet and it's running around, I believe, 8,500 router bits a day. The carbide facility is about 100,000 and it's doing close to six and a half million teeth per week. And then there's the shaper system. It's the shaper facility is smaller and everything's done by custom orders. A lot of this stuff is actually for the smaller shapers. We get it built in the United States and they're using our specifications for it. All the steel that we use comes from Germany. We don't buy recycled metal. It's all pure virgin steel. Okay? Good question. Is Freud an Italian name? Yes, sir. Is it really? Yes. So, Freud is, uh, the first three letters of, of the, the word, uh, the name Freud is F-R-E, and that's the Italian word for Freze. Freze is knives. Okay? The UD is the province or the city Udine where it was born, so it's Freze Udinese. And if anybody watched Serie A soccer, uh, they own the team. The former owners own the team. They also anybody watched Premier League, they own Watford as well. And they used to own Granada in Spain. They sold that off, and they have a, uh, a junior team in I think it's Romania that they use. So for them, it's a small market team, but it's a business, and they make a lot of money. <laughs> so it's Freze Udinese, that's where it started. It's in the, the province of Udine, it's a city of Udine. A lot of Italian uh, areas are like that. You'll have uh, a city, whatever, and it, there's a city, and like New York, New York, right? It's kind of, that's the same thing, okay? Yes? 4 Lee? Okay. Yeah. So there is the uh, second picture you'll see is a bunch of welders. Uh, there's 164 welders on one side. And when they weld the teeth. Now, imagine a doctor's Rolodex that he has. You ever been to the doctor and behind the receptionist and where you book your appointment, there's this huge roll of desk and they flip it around and here comes your file, right? So this thing is 60 feet across and 40 feet high and it's full of router bits or full of uh, carbide bits for saw blades. So those, whatever saw blades are being welded or ground <coughs> and welded on, they automatically feed the machines. So out of the 164 welders, they may be doing you may be doing a bunch of this if everybody heard about the, the famous glue line rip blade. Okay? So this has got two alternate bevels. No, sorry, it's got a triple chip and a flat top on it. So there's two teeth being fed into the machine at, all the time. And as the blade turns around, the tooth is being welded. There is a laser eye that watches the weld and measures the temperature. If the temperature doesn't re reach that critical point, the blade gets ejected and it goes around for a second pass. Even if only one tooth, it gets dropped. I've seen this happen, okay? So it's, they're, they're, when they say to us, uh, we get some, not from the woodworkers, we get it from the, <laughs> the big box stores, we'll, they'll send us back a blade or something, and say it's warped. These, are, these blades are impossible to warp, okay? There's a full 1 8 curved blade and with a plate, okay? So we'll talk a little bit about that afterwards. So the blade comes out of uh, uh, laser cutters. All our blades are laser cut bodies, okay? They will cut 16 blades in 35 seconds. We'll do all blades. Doesn't matter if this side is a 20 inch blade 
seven and a quarter, a 10 and a 12, it's gonna finish in 35 seconds. So it'll cut all the reliefs for where all the teeth are going, all the, where the anti-kickbacks are going, everything, except for the small cuts for the anti-vibration and the question mark for the heat expansion. That goes on to another cutter, it's a smaller laser. But it, it cuts, it takes them off the cutter, 